And then, again, the latest stuff, I'm going to talk to you about venture funding hubs. This is something that we announced um, last week. The first one is going to be in Sheffield, there's going to be some more around the place. And Kay is going to look out for me the quote, because I can put it on screen, I forgot to, from the Deputy Prime Minister about that. Um, so we'll be able to tell you about that soon. Okay, um, the slide is now already out of date, uh, so we've tracked over 150,000, over 160,000 crowdfunds so far. Uh, at any one time, there's about 20,000 crowdfunds live around the world. Those are the ones we know about, probably double that. And maybe may even more if you factor in China and, and, and other places in the country. So there's a map of all crowdfunds. And as I say, it's currently reached 161 out of about 195 countries. Do we know how many platforms are out there? There are additionally 3,000. Yeah. Um, I don't think anyone's going to really definitively say that, but it's a lot. It's, it's, it's more than anyone could wish for. And it's, it's now we to the extent that the platforms are no longer an issue. Yeah. The, the big issue is the one that you guys are in the best place of probably anyone to address. Yeah, I, I usually have a slide you might have in Europe from the World Bank report on crowdfunding in the developing world that says that by 2025, the developing world will have 93 billion US of crowdfunding assets. Mm -hmm. Anyone wants to copy that report, just give me an email and I'll send it to you. Yeah. Another great report, Larry. Yeah, absolutely. The World Bank. Yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot of good stuff. Um, and there's a huge amount more that are approached on a daily basis now by academics who want to uh, really use this data and analyze it um, and, uh, and work out where this is going. Uh, it's now become clear to governments and to you know universities around the world that this is this is a big thing. Um, so I've already mentioned the, the uh, quarterly report. Um, and uh, the jobs impact report, uh, which I just touched on there, which is a, a joint initiative that the government is very focused for and the job back in the States, where we've created an entrepreneurial index where we can uh, basically go and create a report very easily for any town or city in the UK or in the USA and just produce um, a report for all 50 states uh, rating the jobs impact. And again, you'll see how we're using some of that information and insights here later on. I've already mentioned the venture funding hub, so I will come back to them at the end. Um, but what we're at the beginning of is the age of the crowd and the collaborative economy. We're moving from closed and controlled to open and collaborative. And it's, it's happening because it's more powerful. I think that must be right, both the innovation and open source software. Yeah, it's it's strongly related to it. Strongly related. The Venture Funding Hubs is our initiative um, with, which we're to bring people together collaboratively to inflame and support the funding of ventures in places like Sunderland and Newcastle, Sheffield and Manchester and Mechaton would be the mention, but you know, could have got slowed down there. Um, okay, uh, so I've covered some of this stuff already. Um, yeah, let me just, um, just touch on this. Um, What's becoming clear is that we're moving into the new paradigm. Okay, uh, and just some of my just harp to my thoughts from last week. Um, and it's really interesting that it took just over 200 years to go uh, from Isaac Newton to Albert Einstein for classical physics to be refined and superseded by something new, a new paradigm that, that dug deeper and all of the all of the technology that we have today, the sat navs, the mobile phones, the Mac, came out of that shift. It came out of a realization that there was something deeper and something new before. It's about 
Because it was the thought of it that stirred. We don't blame the gym for a real understanding of the economy. Um, and what's beginning, uh, as I say, we're approached now on a, on literally a daily basis by economics departments and researchers around the world trying to work out what's going on here. Because the ground rules have shifted and they're changing. I'm going to explore a bit more. Come back to this diagram at the end. What I'm going to do is I'm going to talk a little bit about the familiar, and I'm going to take you through something that's less familiar. And I'm going to talk about the entrepreneur's journey. And we all know about what happens on the left. You start off with an idea. If you're smart, you're going to do some market research and work out whether there's a market for it or not. Um, and then you, you start writing a business plan. And that's, you know, could be arduous, but that's, you know, that's what you do. Um, once you've got there, unless you're really cautious, you can fund it yourself, or you've got a rich uncle, or you can bootstrap it, or whatever. Um, you're looking for support, financial support from a bank, or an investor, or whatever, and you, you enter the pitching cycle. Okay, some of like snakes and ladders, but there's an awful lot of awful lot of uh, um, uh, uh, snakes and not many ladders. So we know from uh, research that we've done with Asian networks and so on, that less than 1% of business plans get through on each, each circuit around that loop, most of them. You know, on Angel's Dell, you get 140 business plans a day, one goes forward to the next stage, it's less than 1%. Um, and there's a huge, huge rate of attrition. And you go around, and you hope to be fine, and you rewrite the business plan, and eventually you hope to reach this point where you really get into negotiation. And if you're really, really fortunate, you meet the best, most honest VC in the world that I've ever met, <laughs> um, who will tell you the things he was telling you this morning. And if you're not so lucky, you meet one of the others. <laughs> um, but that can be a cycle of negotiation. And eventually, when you reach the stage of funding, um, everything changes. Because right to this point, you've been writing your business plan, you've been pleasing your investors, you've been trying to get all these things going, you've not had very much time to build, uh, uh, think about the product more, to build your, uh, your crowd, to, to do all the things that actually you now have to start doing here to get your business going. You've got the money, right? So let's compare that with this three. And we're talking here largely, well, actually, two or three different kinds of crowds, mm -hmm. but about um, this three down here, about that little unregarded thing that people haven't taken this quite so seriously, called, called reward crowdfunding, which fixes seed funding. And unequivocal about that. In three or five years' time, people will be talking about this is how seed funding happens, this is how it works. Um, I, I'm in no doubt about that at all, and I'll explain why. So, you start off with an idea, but here, as well as doing market research, you <coughs> need to, to, to plan and you prepare and so on, and, and you know, these have together broadly, that you broadly to hire on. But at the point at which you probably be writing and refining your business plan for the world to crowdfund. Okay? And your crowdfund is your business plan, is your business plan. And it's a learning process, but it's a learning by doing a learning by doing process. It's engaging. And if you succeed at that, you get a number of things. You get So you get money, but you get money with customers, advocates, um, committed to, and you've got, if you're really bad at this, roughly a 25% chance, it can be lower than that, there's lots of things you can do to make it higher than that, of succeeding, which is about 20 to 25 times greater than here. Just a minute, this is quite a different model. This is quite a different model.
it's an it's indirect connection to market via a back and range or a local expert who's second guessing the market and they're connecting directly to the market. Yeah. And the market is set, we want that, or we're not interested in that. Um, yeah. I was just going to ask whether that, I would imagine the market would show that that 25% loss from the Q12 increase, I suppose the people you described from the moment are kind of early adopters, they're intelligent, they're seeing things that well, they're very much very diverse.
So uh, just in case um, uh, uh, there's um, any unclarity, I didn't do this at, uh, at the conference, I'm quite sure I don't. So there are principally, there's a lot of kind of crowd coming in. If you, if you want to enumerate them all, you'll be here for a long time. There's principally four, okay? Um, donations isn't really a business model for obvious reasons. Uh, but it's you know great for community projects and that sort of thing. Um, uh, I'll come back and give you more in a second. Uh, lending is a familiar model. Um, there are many differences between all the lending in the web platform, the very end firm, and you can put a small amount of money in, you get a, a return which, which you probably wouldn't get from the bank if you're putting money in. And each loan is built up of small packets for lots of people. It's really but you know the model is not very familiar. Has it? Sometimes called peer-to-peer -peer lending, sometimes called crowd lending. That's one of the main models. It's growing very, very quickly. Very, just so people are aware, there are some platforms out there that are raising money for students to pay for their education. Student funds as well. Student funds. Yeah. There's all sorts. There's real estate crowdfunding. It's taking off in a big way, particularly in the states. And it's taking off here to, to, to some extent. Uh, what you're saying fits into what Paul was saying that I emphasize. This is affecting the whole supply chain of money because people can get money early where they wouldn't have got it. Yeah. And I know the VCs are not against crowdfunding. They love it because people are taking the early risks and proving that something can survive. Yeah. And then the anchors of the VCs feel more comfortable to pay and say, look, it helps to continue or something. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So lending is that bit here. Equity in shares is just like it, it's crowdfunding for shares. So it's lots of people coming on platforms like Crowdcube or Syndicate Room, or um, you know, there's, there's, there's probably there's more than a dozen in the UK already, but they're, they're sort of the bigger names. And you know, I'm offering 10% of my company. Uh, I need to raise 150,000 pounds. Uh, and that will probably be made up of 100 or more smaller investors that were all coming in. Um, two weeks ago, when Cynical Room raised 250,000 for one of my companies, there were 43 investors. Yeah, and it's working. It's yeah. working very well. There's ways to succeed at it. it it's got a lot in common with the, the, the final, and for me, the most revolutionary kind of crowdfunding. It goes under this misleading name of reward crowdfunding. And it's basically a pre-sales model. Let's see how it works. And let's see how it interacts with uh, the entrepreneur's journey. So we start off with uh, the familiar one. So we have an idea. We go create and nothing happens. Ah, good. Um, and we do some marketing first. Um, and we go down the traditional funding route and we need to sweat a bit from the business side. Okay? We've already covered this in a different way, but you know, this is a cycle. It's tough. It's tough being an entrepreneur, isn't it? Someone Alan talked about the entrepreneur's hero. We talked to an organization um, who will remain nameless about this, a support entrepreneur, and they went, they said, yes, it's tough, and it ought to be tough, but only the best should be able to do it. And Alan um, just said, let's, let's talk a bit about that. Um, uh, but, you know, it's a, it's a bit like a, the life of a jobbing actor. You know, it's a life of rejection, of meetings, of being back. You have to rebuild your morale, you have to rejig your business plan and go around. Because at 
So at this point, what I'm really thinking about is, is all the things that make a business work. Fat customers, product, what the difference between the two, how we reach them, how, how we need to engage them, how we're going to change the product to, to make that work better. And it's a very intensive process. It's, this is not a money trick. This is not, you put it on here and they'll come. Um, you're, 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 you're honing your skills, you're learning to communicate, you're learning not to, in, in my case, not to be a geek any longer, but to be able to talk to real human beings in, in, in real language. And because unless you communicate really well, unless you, your product is clear, you're going to get that much attention. Okay, and you, you go on the plant and the pitch, and you do all those business building activities, and building a business and building your skills right at this early stage, okay? And you're gathering a crowd. We were talking about this earlier on. Crowdfunding does a lot of things. You do a lot of things in parallel to what you do in serial business. But fundamentally, the backbone of that is gathering the crowd. You've, you've gone on the interest. You're building interest in what you're doing. And the backbone of that is using social media. And, you know, uh, how do you raise the amount? If you raise, and the average success rate globally is 21%, and we know, as I say, by our study, that can be up to 70 relatively easily. Uh, in the UK, overall, and the US, it's actually 28%. Um, You're running a business. How many leads are there in the job? Which is better, counting or guessing? This is the point we want to put to you. In traditional funding, why would how many leads are there? It's difficult to say. You now we start off with our own few leads. <coughs> Well, the, the, the 
the models of um, capital formation and so on that we had before rely on this. We now have a bean counter making a guess. Okay, and say, well, actually, that looks like something else. Is. And if you succeeded, they, they could go for you, but you'd probably end up with a debt, or you'd lose some equity. And that's you know a problem particularly early on when you receive from them. Okay? And therefore it precipitates that capital. Um, and this time we're going to be Keynesian um, instead of instead of um, at least the anomalies we use. We see if we can do Okay, so through the life of the crowdfunding, we're finding people. Finding people who would buy this, finding people who would play, finding people who become, in one or other way, attached to the project. To the point that we're building that confidence, we're building the trust, and we're building the interest. To the point where they go, yeah, I'll buy into this. Here's my $100 or $150 I want to tell the watch, or my $20 I want to read, or, or whatever. And we're counting. Exactly the point we were making earlier on. Instead of not knowing, we know. Instead of guessing whether we can reach the required level in the job, we're finding whether or not we can. Which is better than guessing. And therefore, as I said before, that capital risk is removed. So the burden on the business is less. The, the capital requirement from outside isn't there. Uh, and so on. Uh, and if you're really fortunate, uh, Premier Watch, which is the iconic one, uh, stellar example, but they ended up with a hundred full jobs of these. It can happen, and can be a problem as well. So, um, Without giving away equity, with a full board and fully funded. Wow, that, that is significantly different. Just so explain how the start trading without any debt or without giving away equity. What are these people buying into? Oh, I don't understand the reward for it, but under normal circumstances, they're going to give away some debt. They're going to give it to the other some equity. Okay. So, in the rewards model, let's, yeah, say, rewards let's, model, let's say you're the you're the person who's come up with the Pebble Watch. You use the Pebble yeah, Watch. Yeah, yeah, sorry, but in the normal circumstances, I'm sorry, but then they will give up some debt and they will give up some equity. <coughs> and it's not rewards. Not in rewards. No, sorry, not in rewards, but in the normal world. Sorry, not the normal world. Yeah, the, the, the normal everything out there. Rewards are yeah. But okay. But the normal circumstances. Yeah, here's, here's the thing. Bear with me, this is what we call normal. We call normal a tiny percentage or a big percentage. Over 95% of crowdfunding is resource crowdfunding. Equity crowdfunding is tiny by comparison. So, under normal circumstances, if 
We must learn how to gather that crowd. If you rely on the platform, um, you rely on someone else to build your business. Now, um, you know, there's some great stories and, 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 and in, in exceptional cases, um, people like Sidney Karun are well connected to angels and so on. Um, and, and they're a hybrid model and there are real positives to that. But, but overall, um, you know, don't rely on the platform is, is my point. Number four, really important, there's a lot of parallels rather than serial activity. And it's cumulatively, cumulatively constructive rather than serially destructive. Instead of walking into a room time after time with a group of people going, what's wrong with what I'm showing you? And they go, we'll tell you what's wrong with what we're showing you because we're the dragons. You're engaging with people, you know, in power up online, who are interested, who will say, well, that's great, but I'm not interested in it unless it's in green. Oh, right, we need to green one. And it's constructive, and it's celebrated. So market testing and law is built in, and it's unavoidable. Connection selling rather than mere activity is rewarded. So actually engaging with people. So many of the other ways to accelerate those printouts have uh, rewarded activity rather than, than those things. Uh, I won't mention some of the things like that. Um, okay, a very different uh, uh, information flows. And there's, there's even a self correcting feedback loop built in there to these browsers. So you're actually connecting with your crowd there and you've got the cards. I thought a few differences. Who's making the big keynote, no-go, or go and decision? It's the market. So it's different people in different roles with different motivations, and no, I'm going to talk about this uh, uh, earlier on, people with intervening agendas who might be going in a different direction. Much lower transaction costs, some of the big ones there, and many more people I'm not sure how it could be more different. This is a new paradigm, a new economic model. Well, can I ask you this? People have said that there's no capitalists. So the risk I see to it too is around the ideas. A lot of people keep my ideas very So, 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 I 
What we're doing is trying to catalyze this. So we're launching the first uh, um, commands that we're going to be launching, the first commands that we're going to be launching, not in London, but in Sheffield, on the 22nd of January. And what we're going to do is we're going to help bring people together by signposting. We're going to help uh, the lawyers, the accountants, the marketers uh, to uh, you know, help up skill ups so that they can, you know, there's huge interest in all of these areas now about supporting this new world, understanding the crisis, understanding the different ways of thinking, the different ways of going to do things. things. And we're going to focus that on that. <coughs> The first of these will be run the incubator in Sheffield. Thank you <laughs> for the introduction to Mark Sanderson. Uh, Alan here went halfway around the world to meet the incubator. Yeah, he's the incubator manager and introduced him to us who are in the same city. There you go, serve you well. Um, so the first one is going to be um, <coughs> the incubator in Sheffield. Uh, and uh, it's going to be online, it's going to be offline, it's going to bring people together. I'm happy for questions or you can get rid of me now. 